she'll know how to reach out to the YouTube video. Well, she's been getting the um, uh, the the online worship fairly easily, and that's on YouTube as well. So I, I feel confident she'd be able to do it. But if you want to listen in, totally great with that. Okay. You know. All righty. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's see. I I I don't. I don't know if there's anybody else. I know Susan Callahan said she couldn't join us tonight. She had a previous engagement. And Jackie Luke also said she had a previous engagement. So what we'll do is in the interest of time and trying to be respectful of everyone, I want to go ahead and get started. Um, and then if people join in, that's great. You know, this is really meant to be a conversation with the congregation who wants to participate and not uh, anything that's a required thing. Um, so I will begin um, with a little bit of a devotion because we come together tonight to talk about Pete's Pantry, to gather knowledge about its operations, and also to have time to ask questions about the future of this ministry. Um, we, know, we all know it has very humble beginnings with our Tuesday night Bible study group and a Bible study that they had where they said, you know, we just want to feed people. Uh, but in this time of pandemic, that mission and ministry has changed and has grown into something that is uh, far more extravagant than what we had originally planned, right? And so, to set the tone for tonight's uh, discussion, I thought it would that I thought that I would share with you a brief devotion on another gift of extravagance and what that means for us as Christ's disciples. So I point you to the story of Mary of Bethany as mentioned in three of the four gospels. And the specific reading I'm going to share is from the gospel of Matthew. And this is the, the Matthew chapter six, uh, excuse me, chapter 26, verses six through 13. And it goes this way. Now, while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Now, last week, our women's online Bible study group read about this passage in the context of holy time. And for those of you that aren't muted, I'm going to go ahead and mute you so that we can have this discussion because I see there's a few of you that aren't necessarily muted yet. And, but, I'll un, but I'll unmute you soon. So we, 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 we read about this in the passage of the context of holy time. We were discussing the difference between chronos and Kairos time, okay? Uh, chronos in Greek is the actual time we find ourselves in right now. So the minutes, the hours, the days, and so on. Uh, but the, the other term, Kairos in Greek, refers to a time that means being in the present, feeling and sensing the now in a way that touches our heart and our soul. So the author of this study points to how Jesus reacts to the disciples' objections about carelessly using such an extravagant gift. She writes, Jesus is not trying to be callous about the needs of the poor. He is making a different point. Unlike the disciples who do not seem to take in the significance of Jesus' upcoming death, this woman has correctly um, read the signs of the time. She has listened to Jesus and heard him, and she is awake to what is happening in the present moment. The disciples grumble about the waste of money that could be used to support their ongoing ministry, 
to keep things going as usual. But the woman has recognized that business as usual is over. Kronos time has been interrupted by Kairos. In this act of anointing Jesus' feet, Mary did more than just cover him with this amazing fragrance. She humbled herself completely using her hair to wipe his feet. And this was in the, in the Gospel of John. To do this, first of all, she had to take a servant's position by kneeling on the floor. Then, if you're looking at this story from the Gospel of John, she took her hair, which the apostles, uh, the Apostle Paul says is a woman's glory, and unbound it, which is rare for a woman to do publicly. And then she used her glory to wipe Jesus' feet. Now, in Jewish culture, cleaning feet was a very demeaning task done by slaves, but here she used her glory, her very best, to clean the most lowly part of Jesus. So in sharing this reading with you, what I hope we can focus on tonight is first to recognize the extravagant love that is revealed in this expanded pandemic version of Pete's Pantry. I believe in this ministry, we have set aside chronos time of what is business as usual, and entered into a Kairos time where we are focused on what is meaningful and important. Second, I am reminded in this passage that Mary was offering the best of herself for the least. In our ministry, uh, in our ministry efforts through Pete's Pantry, there are real people being helped and sustained by what I feel is the best spirit of the St. Peter Lutheran family. Through Pete's Pantry, we continue to tell the story of God's kingdom here on earth now. We continue to reveal the extravagant love of Christ to those who are in need. So the purpose of our discussions tonight will be to guide those efforts, to respectfully listen to one another as we seek what is best and most effective to feed the hungry in this community, whatever that may look like. How do we spend both our time and money in this ministry? As the study writer comments, the perfumed ointment Mary pours over Jesus at the table has a high monetary value and she spends the whole jar, an act the disciples see as wasteful and fri frivolous. Of course, the woman is spending more than money. She is spending effort, spending devotion. She is spending, oh, hold on. She is spending her time as a way of showing love. Tonight, I invite us to talk about how we best spend our time and our resources showing love to our community. So with that, I ask us to pray. Almighty God, you have called us to labor in your vineyard, and without you, we can do nothing. Grant your gracious presence at this meeting, that what we do will build up your whole church and let your Holy Spirit govern and direct us, that we may consult together peacefully, pleasing you with all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so now I invite all of you uh, into this conversation about Pete's Pantry. And I thought we would start off. Uh, Sue Toll, um, I'm going to ask you to unmute. And so uh, we can begin because Sue has, kind of, she's kind of like the ground zero for a lot of what we're doing. And perhaps she can give us some groundwork of what they're what we're doing and how we're operating. Uh, Sue and I talked about this the other day. So Sue, I will let you take it away. Thank you, Pastor. Hi, everybody. Um, I thought maybe uh, we actually picked up an order today. We do it, um, try to do it on Monday or Tuesdays. Can't always get that time because the food bank uh, just doesn't have appointments always available uh, to us, but try to do it on Monday or Tuesday because um, when we do it on Monday or Tuesday, we get to pick 
out uh, produce and some dairy products um, and breads and desserts um, free. And so for instance, today, what we were able to get were um, lemons, apples, uh, baby Bella mushrooms, celery, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, oranges, cuties, green peppers, sweet small peppers, uh, the red, yellow, and orange peppers, yogurt, uh, cream cheese, sliced cheese, um, and cheese um, sticks. Um, and then uh, also uh, some cheddar and caramel popcorn. On the, when we actually pass out um, in the boxes, I try to include, we, we look to get um, a salty treat and a sugar treat or, you know, a sweet treat just sort of to, uh, you know, brighten their days, I guess. But we got all of those uh, vegetables uh, in, in a quantity enough for, uh, you know, the most we ever had was 42 um, people. And, uh, but we have enough quantity for them to have, um, they all, all can have some of the, of the produce. Um, well, we, so then, so that's the free at the pantry itself. And we order from, or from the food bank itself. And we order from the food bank um, things on, I don't know, can you see this list? Pastor, can you anybody see this? Well, sort of, yes, but it's, you're very, very small. I'm very small. Well, just to give you the idea, this is just a, a copy of the, of the, what's available right now. So what you do, here's page two, I know you can't really see it, but you get the idea that there's lots of things, um, you know, to pick from. Page three, page four, page five, page six. Um, and so what you do is you go down through, uh, so it's like separate issues. One is the free stuff you can pick up at the food bank. Another is items that you order. And I'm just gonna tell you what we ordered um, today. Uh, reasonable example. Um, we have uh, one mom who's coming who's got a little baby, maybe a month old. I don't know exactly how old. Any rate, it was free, but I picked up some um, baby food um, to have that on hand. And that was free. The ground beef has never actually been free. So what we got was uh, 40 pounds of ground beef and um, what that worked out, so 40 pounds for $6.40. So, you know, divide that out. Um, we got cereal for $5 and four cases of that for $5.32. And green beans have, have been hard to come by. Um, so I ordered four cases of that at $17.28. So this particular order, uh, came up to, I think, $29. Um, but then we had the free things from the produce. And then we also had free things that came with the order that we didn't actually have to uh, pay for. That would be on the pallet. Uh, that was the baby food and the uh, Colby cheese and the ground pork. Um, I think actually the chicken legs and chicken thighs were also on for free, but I didn't order those for this time because we still have uh, a supply in, in the freezer of those two items. Um, okay, so then another thing that we do connected with the food bank is while we're out there, they have rows of shelving that have items on it uh, for 19 cents a pound. And so today um, I picked up uh, chunk light tuna, you know, cans of tuna fish, and at what well, equaled out to be four cents a can. Um, the pump hand soap, because hand soap is one of the things that we, that we offer, and that worked out to be 10 and a half cents for each, uh, you know, bottle of the soap. Uh, the rotini, Pasta was 19 cents for 16 ounce boxes. The Pop-Tarts 
came out to 16 cents um, a box. Um, the rotini, which was a, a pasta with white cheddar cheese, came out to six and a third cents per box. The ground coffee, because coffee is one of the things that we offer, and that came out to be um, 12 cents per, uh, it's like in a vacuum pack, um, can foil sealed thing. Um, and so that was 12 cents uh, per brick. Uh, the macaroni and cheese came out to nine cents a box. And the Uncle Ben's uh, ready rice, the uh, whole grain brown rice came out to 10 cents a box. So then you're kind of looking at three things. You're looking at the produce that we get for free and the breads we get for free, the things that we can get for 19 cents a pound, and the things that we order. And some of the things we order cost, and some of those are free. So, um, so we go out to the food bank, pick it up, bring it back, put put things in the you know freezer and, re and refrigerator, and then sort them out and put them on the boxes. Now this next week, we have a big order coming. This actually was a little order, but I like to do it every week so we can get the fresh produce um, and the bread. But this next week coming, we have, we're only buying um, one thing and that's the pulled pork. And we're getting um, four cases of that, two pound uh, per, Per, um, and that's twenty-five dollars and sixty cents, and that would be enough for offering two times. Um, and then everything else is going to be free. That being the pinto beans, the assorted cereal, Fruit Loops, honey bunches of oats, uh, more Colby cheese, cheeseburger skillet dinner, chicken breast, boneless. So we've been having the chicken legs and the chicken thighs. Now we're going to get the chicken breast. Um, green beans, because they went from costing to zero within a week time. So that was kind of disappointing. But now we're going to have plenty of green beans. Um, Mandarin oranges, um, a baking um, box of things that they can bake like biscuits. Um, pas uh, elbow macaroni, um, sliced peaches, peanut butter, pear slices, potatoes au gratin, canned potatoes, um, syrup, and mixed vegetables. And a lot of these things, uh, if anybody who's visited the church know this is probably that the um, mm, nursery has uh, a supply of food, as does the pantry. But the reason for that is they're free. I'm only really stocking up on those things which are free because, you know, you can't, you can't tell what, when, the, when the food bank is going to have something for free or when it's uh, when it's going to be charged. And in the last few weeks, they've been just very generous with with what things they're they're offering. And so I'm kind of I'm stocking up. So you know, uh, so for a while we ought to be able to um, go on with with the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that. I thought I'm, I unplugged it. I get I don't know why it's ringing. Um, any rate, uh, this will last us for quite a while. We'll still need to get odds and ends of things as we go along. But even if the even if the food bank changes, um, that we're, we're pretty well set right now. Um, maybe that's all I've got to say because the phone is bothering me. It's not bothering you guys. <laughs> so that, that's fine, Sue. I mean, that, that that's good. I mean, I think that's one of the one of the questions that we have had consistently is how is this? How are we afford be able to afford all the stuff we're giving and all of the the non-perishable stuff I mean, I mean i mean perishable stuff as opposed to non-perishable i mean that's one of the things that we talked about um early on my impression was this pantry started with just per non-perishable items that our bible study group would bring in and they would just go to buyers and they'd find a deal and they'd buy some extra macaroni and cheese and it got on a shelf and it got given away and now it has expanded vastly because we've been able to plug into the Michigan Food Bank and we've been able to to um, fall under that umbrella. And so there's been some questions. So 
thank you very much. That that gives us a little bit of an overview. So at this point, I'm going to uh, change my grid back to all of the people that are here. We do have um, technically 18 participants, but we have some double participants. So we I think we have a little bit more than that. Melissa Raditz, you may want to take a count as to how many people who are actually joining us. So um, that that are that are listening in. Uh, so we have those couples that are joining us. And I will now open up the floor to people who have questions. Lynn, you have your hand raised. So go ahead, Lynn, give us a question. The uh, $2,400 I think came up with, uh, we came up with that or you did by because of $200 per month. Uh, is that is that right, Sue? Is that how you came up with that? You came up with that as you kind of decided how how much you buy every month? Well, I did in terms of, well before, I, before, before I want to say the budget line item that was discussed was not something that Sue Toll or anybody that was specifically from Pete's Pantry came to the council and said, we need to do this. It was just a conversation within the council that oh, happened. And okay. so it was not, it, Sue Toll didn't, uh, and, the, and the other members of the Tuesday Night Bible Study Group, they didn't come to the council and say, we want this money. It was something where it got brought up by the people of the council talking about the way we're doing ministry right now in this time of pandemic. And after the discussion, it was voted on. So it didn't, okay. it, I, I don't want to, I don't want to mislead anybody on this call that it, that it came from an outside source. It really came out of discussions from the church council. All and right, Sue, you, you can, Sue, you can respond. I, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Well, my response to that is I had gone through a period of time. Yeah, it wasn't me. I didn't come. I, yeah, but I, I had gone through a period of time of trying to get copies of the bills because you understand that um, the free things are free, but then the 19 cents you multiply by the number of pounds of things that we pick up and you would add that to whatever the order was. And uh, I was having a little, in my own mind, consolidating a you know, getting it to balance out in my head. And anyway, so I was asking for um, copies of the actual bills. And, but you know, it's COVID. And uh, 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 Bar Marquette was gracious to try to get me copies of those, as was um, Terry. Uh, but I haven't actually had a, a copy of the, of the billing since uh, mid-October. So, you know, I didn't, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to actually form how much is, you know, I would think you could look at maybe the church certainly has a, a record of, of the checks that were sent to the food uh, bank and be able to come up with, a, with that, but I personally do not. So it looks like Bruce has his hand raised. So Bruce, why don't you chime in with what you want to say? I do. I am the one that brought up to the council uh, and wanted a line item budget for the pantry. Um, as we went through uh, last spring, our council kind of searching for things that we need to do as a ministry, I think the biggest thing we identified at that time was Pete's Pantry. And so this last meeting, I said I didn't notice anything in the budget. And so if we're going to make this a priority, I ask, I just ask for $1,000. I think after discussion, and Melissa Raditz, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the council said, no, I, you're right. I, I think that we should, you know, make this a line item thing. Now, let me, Sue has kind of given you the little bits and pieces of how she gets this stuff. But let me give you a little bit of an overview of what this woman actually does. So I used to do the, once we identified and we could use the food bank, I opened up an account and I would get, I would buy a lot of dry goods, canned goods and that stuff. And it, it cost us some money. And once we identified, you know, okay, we're going to make this a ministry. And I said, I need help 
Suto stepped up and said, I'll order. So I taught her how to order. I can't tell you people. <laughs> Women are the greatest shoppers I've ever seen in my entire life. And Suto is probably the greatest. She finds everything free. The one that, the last, the one that she picked up today, it was 228 pounds of food. We paid $33.56 for that. And the only thing we paid for probably for that was just a delivery fee or a loading fee. Um, the month before that, in November 18th, we picked up almost 3,000 pounds of food and brought it there. It cost us $64.40. That's almost 3,000 pounds. It took us two truckloads to get it all there. She has taken this to a new level. As people drive up, they not only get a box of all the things that she was telling you about, sweet, sugar, pasta, all these things. They also get their pick of a meat. It could be a ham. It could be chicken thighs. It could be turkeys. And what else, Sue? I don't know. Where do we store yeah, all this frozen we stuff? Pork. We, yeah, pork. Where do we store all this stuff? We don't have a big enough freezer. So, what does Sue find? Friends that donate a chest freezer that we can now store things into. So you get a meat, cheese, eggs. All right, so I put the light item in. I asked for a thousand, we got 24. I'll tell you what, if you just give us a thousand and we keep Sue, we could probably feed the world. <laughs> So Bruce, I, I, I really, I mean, I see people applauding. People are really, I mean, there is no question that this, um, and that's why I started off this conversation talking about extravagant love and this story about Mary of Bethany and how there, that there is this, this extravagant love that we have and that we're showing. And I think that's really reflected in uh, the, the kind of things that we're doing, like you. We are telling the story of God's kingdom here on earth in this way. I mean, it, it's there. But then at the same time, this conversation is about how can we best spend our time and our resources showing love to this community? What, like, what is the best way to have this, um, to have this be revealed to our community? And I think that there are people on this call that have some genuine, um, you know, not quite, not concerns, but more questions about like, where are we going? What is happening? And what is the best, what are the best practices? And I've talked with several people. And so I want to open up this conversation there is, for, first by saying there is no doubt that Sutol and all of the people of St. Peter that are contributing to this are giving that level of extravagant love that is mirrored in that scripture passage that I shared with you. There is absolutely no question that, 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 this, is, that this is an extravagant love of, of trying to be God's presence here on earth. And, and yet we're still kind of faced with what is best practices, what is best um, for our community. And so I wanna open this up to the conversation and questions about those people who may have those concerns that they have voiced to me already and to see where this discussion goes. Um, so, but thank you. Thank you first to Sue and all of the people that are, that are contributing to this. And not all of them are from our congregation. Some of them are Sue's friends and other people outside that are, that are donating. I mean, 
Bruce, we've had conversations where you've had somebody walk up to you and hand you a check and they, they don't even, they don't even, they're not even part of our congregation. So, I mean, there are a lot of people that are contributing to this success. Oh, of- I have, I have like four or five different God moments I'm ready to share anytime. Yeah. Anybody ask. Yeah. I, I mean, I love, I love those. Moments, okay. so. okay. I love ahead. those. So I will, I will invite those. If I can see you on camera, I raise your hand. If I can't see you on camera, then, um, okay. So Sherry, raise your hand, but Sue first. So let's go to Sue and then we'll raise, then we'll, well, then we'll talk to Sherry. What else she does? I, I don't mean to, you know, I just want to say that there is the other aspect of what we're doing, which is the, um, sort of the essentials. Um, the, the, uh, things that, uh, they tend, they get to pick out like three from uh, laundry detergent, uh, dish soap, uh, shampoo, uh, feminine products, feminine hygiene products, um, toothpaste. Uh, I know you guys can think of these quicker than I can think of them. Um, Just soap, but hand soap. You know, we do toilet yeah. paper, paper yeah. towel. Yeah, those are big too. Yep. Um, toothpaste. When, when, we, when we, I at one point, um, someone had mentioned to us that uh, for people who receive assistance, that some of those things are harder to come by um, because they're not usually offered. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but we were told that. And, and so that's where that started from. And, and that should be another part of the discussion of where do we go from here. Up, up till now, that has not been, um, with the exception of once in a great while, we can get toilet paper from the uh, pantry or the food bank. And once in a great while we can get um, paper towel. Um, and we did get some pump hand soap. Uh, in fact, I got that today. And um, uh, we also got some bar soap, but uh, it's, it's rare and in, far and few in between. Okay, so what I wanna say though, is that up till now, the that has not come out of what uh, people have donated. Uh, other than, for instance, one of one of one of uh, uh, Bruce's God moments, uh, he he shared that uh, finances with me to go out and uh, shop, um, and I've had uh, Pete, my, some of my friends have donated uh, towards that. But that would be something you'd want to consider in your discussion of where do we go from here. So far, it's not been out of what uh, the the normal uh, St. Peter uh, giving has has it's not coming out of that. So. Something and to consider. Record, and for the record, most uh, most charitable organizations consider paper towels, paper products, and feminine hygiene products to be <coughs> to be luxury items. Which, when I hear as a woman, and when I hear that a, a feminine hygiene product is a luxury item, it makes it breaks my heart because that's not. But that's. Mm-hmm. So, Sherry, you had something that you were going to share. Just, you I want to be brief with this, but I, Sue's told all about how she does the ordering and goes and picks it up. Bruce and her talked about that, but it has to be organized and the boxes have to be loaded and it has to be organized in the back room. And Sue, and bless her heart, along with Barb, I know, uh, Romali, and, and a lot of her friends, just they organize that and, and they're ready on Wednesdays for the volunteers that come in just to hand out boxes or to go in and pick off tables, what needs to be, you know, I, I want to get the paper towels. I want, you know, it, it's just amazing that the time she puts in on top of the ordering piece of it, it's, there's just so much more that has to be done to keep it organized. So it doesn't just come in boxes to hand out to people. Just want to uh, recognize that. Yeah. Thank you, Sherry. That That's a good affirmation. Again, I will, I will uh, commend to all of you that this is not, um, this is not a, uh, kind of evaluation of how committed everyone is to Peace Pantry. It's an evaluation of what we need to do going forward. It, it has nothing to do with the, the sentiment and the heartfelt, you know, extravagant love. That's why I started with that story. It has nothing to do with how deeply felt this ministry runs, but it has to do with what, how do we spend our time and resources in the best way to show love to our community. And so that's what this discussion is about. So I invite those that have joined us who may have some questions and concerns, 
not to say that those questions and concerns uh, are a negative against what has been done, but just like, what are, how are we spending our time and our resources to show love to our community? Well, I don't, this is Jan. I don't know if this fits what you're saying, but my concern is when I go into church now, when I do my financial stuff, everywhere I look is Pete's pantry stuff. I mean, it's like it's taken over the social room. It's taken over the Luther room, the hallway. Um, what's going to happen when we open up church again? Okay, Bruce, you're raising your hand. Go ahead. So, Jan, in response to that, uh, it is kind of spread out right now. And we are looking at different options when the time comes. And, of course, we are giving out the food um, from the church to vehicles. So, hopefully, if the church is able to open up, then we are able to now let the people come in and pick what they want. Um, I actually have uh, from the food bank are going to donate extra shelving. Uh, I think Pastor uh, Sue and you have, and have talked about maybe expanding the pantry storage into the nursery part because that's really not being utilized, but we have extra shelving coming. So we can move everything back and out of the way. You know what? We open up the church. We'll, we'll make sure that everything's out of the way. Church is number one. So Bruce, in response to what you said, the, the preliminary discussion uh, for those of you, just to clarify, is that perhaps the space in the nursery that is a little bit larger than the space that is in the original Pete's Pantry space um, is bigger. Than, and so perhaps, and it's not, a, it's, it's just tentative conversations about what to do, but perhaps we convert the nursery space to a Pete's Pantry space and the old Pete's Pantry space to a nursery space. Because it's not that we don't want to have a nursery, but that perhaps we don't need quite as large a room for a nursery, given the fact that we don't have as large a community of small children. Um, so, that, so that's the preliminary conversation, but there has been no definite discussion, but that's kind of like, a, that, that's one of those iterations, Jan, uh, to answer your question, that might solve the problem of what do we do with all this stuff? So Jan, other questions or other concerns, or was that just the primary concern you had? Well, I'll let somebody else talk before I say anything else. Okay. Other people, I know we have others on the call that have been, uh, you know, kind of wondering how we're doing this and what's going forward. So Melissa Raditz, you raised your hand. Yeah, I just, just for clarification, uh, Peace Pantry is an official ministry of the church, right? Mm -mm. Who said mm -mm. It it is now. It is now. It had not been originally. It, the original inception started from the Tuesday night Bible study group, but the church council, as it grew, moved it under the uh, the uh, responsibility of the outreach committee. So, okay. Oh, so that's question one. Um, and then, I, is there a because the, the need has grown, I suspect that because of the virus, there will be a systemic long term need. Um, as we know, with the last recession, it, it, has, it took Michigan a long time to kind of recoup from that, uh, approximately 10 years. And in some areas, they're still recouping. And now it can hit hard again with the virus. I guess my thing is, has Pete's Pantry Group looked at, um, obviously, they're feeling the need right now. But at what point is there where we, it grows beyond the church capacity and maybe something more needs to happen at that point. I, has that conversation, you know, that arc of that conversation happened because um, it has grown immensely. And, um, you know, I think it's wonderful we are able to, you know, rise up and meet the need and contribute to our community. Um, but I'm just curious that those conversations, you know, have they taken place and what did, if they have, what, what does that look like? What did that sound like? 
this is our first attempt at that kind of conversation and my understanding from my period of being here. And Bruce, I'll get to you in just a second, but I'm gonna say one thing. I know that I have talked with a few people that are on this call about the historical arc of uh, feeding the hungry in Battle Creek. And perhaps it would be a good idea to invite those people who have that historical perspective to talk about how this has been addressed in the past and um, where we are right now. Like, are we back to square one? Are we in a space where we need to beef this up because there's because clearly there's a gap? I mean, I don't, I, I was not here in those earlier years. So um, perhaps there is someone who can speak to that historical arc first. I, okay, I Lynn. Oh, okay, yeah, Melissa, what do you wanna say? One more thing is also, you know, we've got a group of people that are doing it now from the Tuesday night Bible study group. My thing is always, you know, to make sure that ha if they ensure that the legacy continues and that Pete Pantry continues to be a part of a, a ministry that we, you know, we have moving forward. Are they working on training their replacement per se? Are there other people that are coming behind them that know how to do what Sue Toll does? And there's more than one person. Do they have, you know, is that in play because that's very important to carry it forward, you know, as the need would probably continue. And that's just part of the discussion, but that yeah. I just wanted to ask that that's question. A, that's so. a good point, Melissa, but let's, uh, Lynn, you raised your hand about that arc of the history, the history of, uh, you know, treat, you know, feeding the hungry here in Battle Creek. I think there's a little bit of an arc that we need to revisit before we kind of go forward. I, I don't know if this will answer that question, but, uh, in Battle Creek, there are right now six food pantries that are under one umbrella. And those pantries, one of those is the Lakeview Food Pantry that we participate in. And all of those are, uh, well, they're open various times during the week, but you only can go there once a month. Uh, I'm sure that's part of the reason Peace Pantry has been so successful because we have no restrictions on uh, how people can come or when they can come or how often they can come. We have seen, I think, and Jan and maybe Jackie can, and Bill and whoever else works, Russ, Sherry, have worked at the uh, Lakeview Food Pantry. Right now, it, it doesn't seem like it's as busy as it was before the pandemic, in all honesty. So that that's different than what we see at Pete's Pantry. But once again, I think part of that is because the words got out there that it's available every week. I don't know if that gives you your answer, but. Well, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a fair start. So Bruce, you had your hand raised, so I don't wanna, I wanna give you the opportunity, Bruce, to say what you wanted to say. You're on mute, Bruce. Heck, I forgot. It's been so long, I forgot. That's okay. That's all right. Um, uh, any anyone else want to speak to this um, kind of understanding of the history of hunger ministry in in Battle Creek and where we fit into that picture? All right. Okay. So I'm okay. gonna. Wait, wait, hold on. Before, Bruce, Bruce uh, okay, so Barb raised her hand and Sue, but I'll let you speak first because you had raised your hand first. So go ahead, Bruce. So I remember now that what we were talking about, Melissa, you asked if people were being trained to do all this and, you know, I guess I want to tell you again how this all started. This was, came from a Bible study group who decided one time at one of our Bible studies that we needed to reach out to basically our, our church. That is what we started this out as. We wanted to make sure that members of our church incognito basically whatever you could come in this back room you could pick out a bunch of canned goods dry goods whatever and you know that really didn't 
you know, people didn't really do. And so then we kind of opened it up to the outside. And so those people then would come on Wednesdays and we allowed them to pick out up to 15 items. So we had to kind of limit it because we are on a little budget, you know. There was only, I don't know, 13, 14 of us that were feeding this. And then we decided, okay, we get food from the food pantry. And so we kind of expanded it. And here's the thing, Melissa. So in answer to your question, God has grown this in so many ways. It's unbelievable. I'll just start with a couple of them. You know, I pulled into the church with a truckload of food to be unloaded. Not once, twice. And I thought, gee, it would be nice to have some help to get this done. Guess what? A car pulled in. Each time, it was Russ and Sherry Carney. And they said, do you need some help? Absolutely. Well, Russ said, you're lucky because I hit every red light coming here. And if I hadn't hit every red light, I'd have missed you. We talked about the little lady, and I'm not convinced it was a lady because it was a start of the COVID. She had a mask. I, I think it was an angel, to tell you the truth. She walked in one day at the end of when we were giving out food, and she said, I'd like to make a donation. And I was trying to get some money to sue, to help out all those things, you know, those extra not food items. And I, I tried to do that. And I was thinking about $200. She walked in. She had her mask on, and she said, well, I'd like to make a donation. Do you take donations? I do. She handed me a lot of bills. Do you know how many dollars those were in there? $200. $200. Here's another one. Just Wednesday. We didn't have that much bread. When we, we got a certain table, as the people come out, we give them the food, then we let them go out to a table to pick out bread and vegetables and whatever we've got out there. Didn't have much bread. Lynn, help me out. Your friend, what was his name, Bill? Bill showed up in a pickup truck with a load of bread. How much do you want? How much you got? But I'll take everything you got. And we did. Now, if that is not God at work, I don't know. So, Melissa, in regards to your question about who takes over for Sue or we train it, I can't tell you. But I know this. God wants this to happen. God is working and you look at the faces of the people we feed each week, it's unbelievable. There is so much thanks. I have had people cry about the, the amount of food we give them. Cry. And so thankful. I have prayed with people. I have asked people about when is your church open? Is that part of our ministry maybe down the road that we think about that this is we give and now we bring people into the church if it's ever open? I don't know. So that's the answer. I'm good at preaching. Sorry. Thank you. No, no, that, that, thank you, Bruce, for sharing that. Now, Barb Hefner, you had your hand raised, and then we'll go to Sue Toll. So, Barb Hefner, what did you want to say? Well, my concern is, what can we afford? And, and when we look at the budget, well, 
backup. Yesterday, when we have the discussion on the proposed budget, Gary Gutekunst made the comment that Pete's Pantry in 2020 has received $3,500 in donations, which is more than what a line item is. So maybe you don't even need a line item to begin with because if people see the line item, they're gonna think you don't need the money. Um, the other thing is, is that if we don't, we're in deficit spending. You know, if you run your own personal savings and checking account, and and something, and I'm not denying that Pete's Pantry is a wonderful thing. It, it is, but maybe we are doing too much. If we, I just don't see that we can afford it. We can't keep, we can't keep dipping into our savings account every month. And that's my comment. I I appreciate it that that's what this that's what this forum is for. Sue Tall, you had your hand raised as well. Harold, we'll get to you next. Um, well, just that, um, you know, when we were talking about the six pantries in, in Battle Creek, I thought that was really beautiful comments by the, the lady at Lakeview um, Pantry. And, you know, I think it actually when we were first come, come under the uh, um, outreach committee, there was a concern as to like whether we would be trying to be in competition with the other pantries. And truthfully, we don't want to do that. And so maybe, you know, I mean, I think I think all things are to be considered in what, what we're talking. Maybe we, you know, maybe we need to throw in with them or I, I don't know what, but there was, they are a steady influence and being there a long time. And to Melissa, uh, I think you're right. There does need to be um, more, more of a uh, coming on board for future. Right now we have um, uh, four different people each week coming on Wednesdays, but a lot of those are repeats. And of course they know what they're doing. And um, Betty uh, Everest and Susan Callahan have come on Wednesdays. Um, not a, well, I mean, on like Saturdays to work on the boxes, but it's true. There's not really that many people. Actually, it's mostly, my, it's, uh, Susan was out at the food bank with me once, um, at least, but uh, mostly it has been my friends. So at any rate, Melissa, you're right. We need to, if anybody has a heart for it, um, share, share what, what uh, needs to be done and share how to do it. So when I first moved here, one of the statistics that was shared with me um, by the Synod was that Calhoun County, specifically our, our area, has more charitable organizations than any other county in the entire United States per capita, which means there is a lot of overlap and there is a lot of agencies that are doing the same work and competing for the same dollars and same support. So that is also a consideration in this time. Yes, we're doing really good work and we have these really great stories. But again, I go back to this, I go back to the question of how, you know, what, how is, our, how are we best able to spend our time and resources sharing love for our community? So I, I, I just kind of con continue to resonate with that question. That's the point of this conversation. So Harold, you had your hand raised, so I will, I will turn it over to you. Okay, first of all, thank you, Pastor, for putting this evening together. I think uh, it's a great discussion. Um, secondly, for all those involved that have been with Pete's Pantry, you know, it, they've done a, a great thing. It's a great mission. And, um, the thing I, I guess I'm shocked at is before when you said or Melissa asked about, you know, whose project this was and whether this was the St. Peter's Church project, um, it just became church, a St. Peter's Church project just within this past month when the council put it into the line item of the budget. Um, I think before that happened, we should have been able to have a church uh, discussion about whether that was a viable thing to do or not, because up until a month ago, this was uh, the Tuesday night Bible studies project. 
Harold, just to be clear, just to clarify before before you continue, it's been a few months. It has not been, it's been recently, you are correct, but it's been a few months that we moved the Pete's Pantry. <clears throat> it was during this time of pandemic. I think it was, I, I can't remember exactly, it was maybe April or May. We can go back to the minutes, to, but we moved Pete's Pantry under the uh, um, responsibility of the outreach committee. So it wasn't just in the last month, but you're right. It has been very recent. Go okay, ahead. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in, you know, with what Barb Hafner says is, is uh, I totally agree with, and it was a, a, you know, a good lengthy discussion that uh, finance committee had, you know, at their last meeting in um, the budget concern of the budget of what it would look like for 2021. And um, then when we were surprised that council later, you know, added the line item and certainly is going to increase the deficit. You know, Jan got in touch with me and really concerned about when we haven't even put into the consideration of probably losing about $20,000 in the neighborhood of about $20,000 of giving from members that we've lost now for 2021. Um, you know, if you take that into play, you're looking at a, a negative budget of 21 of almost $25,000. And as Barb says, I don't see how we can afford any more, you know, deficit than, than what we've had. Um, fortunately, because church has been closed, even through property, uh, we've saved $10,000, um, because of uh, the expenses that have not happened, you know, utilities have been over, you know, uh, less of fifty percent less than than what they would have been if we were open. So, um, I mean, we I really have a grave concern as to, you know, we start something and we can't continue it because it outgrows us, and the concern is I don't see where either the Tuesday night Bible study has put together a formal guidance or mission as to what their mission really is. We're just, they're just shooting from the hip and trying to, you know, being better than any of the other, you know, pantries that are available. I don't think that's the point. I think we should follow the guidelines of what the rest of them are. As Lynn said, when you have people that become known that they can come to us every week, they certainly will. And when they can get a you know, grocery card box, you know, to take home, which they can't anywhere else, um, they're gonna be back. And I don't think we're ready to, um, to create, you know, that kind, of a, that kind of an expense. Thank you. Sue Harris, you are waving your hand, so I'm going to ask you to speak. Yeah, well, I came on this call basically because I was um, wondering how I could get involved in the pantry. And I think one of the issues for me is that it seemed to me a bit of an insular thing. And I wasn't sure that I would even be welcome there, you know, that it was the Tuesday nights group. And, and, um, and I, I guess I've been a member of St. Peter for 44 years. And um, during that time, in many roles I've played there, um, I, w one thing I know about St. Peter is that if you put out an invitation to people and let people clearly know that there's an opportunity, A, to volunteer, or B, to donate, that people step forward and do that. But I don't think that's been made very clear. There was one correspondence I saw about donating and I sent a check because I thought that's a worthwhile cause and I support it. Um, so whether, I, I don't wanna weigh in on whether it should be a line item or not a line item, but that's how I feel that, that maybe more outreach to the congregation as far as how can you be involved and um, how can you donate to the project if you wish to? And then um, also um, 
my other concern during this time is what kind of precautions are being taken if I were to volunteer that I would be safe there, you know, as far as people wearing masks and distancing and all of that. So that's we'll do two. We'll do two things. That's a, that's a beautiful question there, Sue. And I think that's one of the questions that a lot of people have. Lynn, you had a comment. So first, what I want to do is go to Sue Toll and have her explain some of the precautions that we're taking and things. And then we'll give, we'll turn to Lynn because you have a comment. So Sue Toll. Okay, um, there's been, uh, you know, because of everything in COVID, things have kind of evolved. Well, we evolved into uh, a chart, sort of like this, of the things that we're doing. Um, COVID guidelines for Pete's Pantry. Uh, the food boxes are to be filled by Saturday, so there's at least a, a three-day resting period uh, for COVID, should there be any there, to die off. Uh, but the food that, that we're actually packing has been there two, three weeks so uh, or more. Um, the packing room and kitchen hygiene to disinfect all surfaces touched and then vacuum. On Wednesday, we wear masks and we're asking the people in the cars to wear masks. The person who goes down the line to ask for um, their names and information I've suggested to them that they wear a mask and I've provided um, shields too. That's really kind of hard because you get all fogged up inside those shields. But at any rate, it's like a, a double layer and I have some other shields coming that might be better. And to, we've got that little, that's very nice, the little squirter hand sanitizer that's there uh, by the door. to sanitize our hands often to maintain distance, of course, uh, to remind the families to stay in their cars um, once in a while, there'll be somebody who, you know, they don't have a button to open their trunk or whatever. And once in a while, uh, there's one lady that has a stick that she opens the trunk and she does like this. She puts a stick in there to keep it open. So, but by and large, the families stay in their car. Um, the, the, the pantry person, uh, us, we are to write down the names that we don't have. We don't hand it to them to write down. We, we write down um, so that there's no back and forth with the, a notebook. We're sanitizing, uh, the aim is to sanitize the coolers because we put the meat and the, the, and the cheeses and eggs and stuff in coolers and to like sanitize them before and after use. Uh, and again, in that area to sanitize all surfaces touched. Um, and to the best of my understanding, that has been the advice from uh, people with, has given input. That's what we're doing. Good, thank you. Now, Lynn, you had a comment. You raised your hand. Yeah, just uh, in regards to when when we identified the Pete's Pantry under outreach, at that point, uh, and maybe, maybe we didn't do it quick enough, but we did. I went on a video uh, one Sunday and asked both for donations for actually Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Pete's Pantry, and even Lakeview Pantry. So, uh, and I've only done that once, a video. And I keep continually trying to send out uh, emails in regards to help, getting help, volunteers, and donations. So uh, we haven't been real aggressive with that. I'll agree with that. Uh, but I think we are trying to involve more people from the congregation in this particular ministry at this point. Thank you. So before Bruce, I, I think Betty Everest grandson who is on the phone with her, uh, it looks like he raised his hand, but I, I will open that up. Ryan, did you have a question from Betty? I had a question, not from Betty, but from myself. When you're yeah. going out to the cars, um, do you provide a mask if the people in the car don't have a mask? Yes, we do. Yes. Great. Yeah. So that we, was we my have, only question. Yeah. So we have several, we have, that's a great question, uh, Ryan. Uh, we, we do have uh, several masks that were made by our, um, by Jen Ludwig that are available. So if we do have someone who comes and they don't have a mask, we have something we can give them. That's, that's a great question. 
So we yeah. also have disposable ones. Yeah. We also have disposable ones. Yeah, we do have disposable ones as well. So yes, thank you very much. That's a good. That's that's a really good question. Um, so Bruce, yes, go ahead. So Sue, in regard. <laughs> Once a month, little Riley and Berkeley and I, if we're not doing the hokey pokey, <laughs> uh, we do a thing at the end of the month. And, you know, I ask for donations. I ask for people to want to help out. And I do it in the most silly way that I possibly can to get people's attention. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, every month I'm trying to do that. So Sue Harris, I mean, we are we are asking in a multitude of ways for people to help, but um, it's not something that maybe everyone has access to or sees every bit because not everybody's watching the online uh, worship service and sees the announcements. And, you know, our communication is, ha we have challenges. I mean, we can send it out via Facebook. We can send it out via, via email. And, you know, it's... Uh, I always go back to that. It's like, it's the literacy program. We need to invest in literacy in America, teaching people how to read, to read their emails, to read all the Facebook posts. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things we're in an overload. Okay, Craig, you're raising your hand. What would you like to say? I guess, um, um, I hear people, you know, talking about, you know, uh, the, the money and, and you know, where, where is this ministry going and, and everything like that. Um, you know, I, I've been a, been, a, been a part of this now for almost a year with, with Bruce and with, with Sue and everything. And um, I just feel like this is a ministry that, that is right now the only really ministry that, that's keeping our church alive. Um, what else is going on at St. Peter's Church right now? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely we do, we nothing. Do have, we do have other ministries. Uh, Bill Duggan, maybe you can, I mean, not necessarily at the church building, but Bill Duggan, you raised your hand. Exactly. Thinking, well, I, mean, I think Bill Duggan will probably challenge that a little bit, Craig. So, Bill, yeah, why I mean, you say uh, something? Yeah, I, I, I mean, we're... I think, uh, Greg, if you saw our video that we put out, we're doing quite a bit. We're at the other food pantry, the Lakeview Pantry, uh, twice a month now, and actually three times if you count the uh, car drive through. We do the Salvation Army Kitchen, and we do the St. Thomas uh, Breakfast. And those are just a few of the things that we do. I mean, I think there's a lot of ministry going on right now at St. Peter. Yeah, but, maybe but not about building, but but, but yeah, those aren't but it. those aren't our ministries. Those are ministries. From other churches that you know that that are that we're participating in, I, I've got to disagree with you on that. And, and Lynn, can, Lynn can speak okay. to this. We have done we've done a lot of stuff through the Lakeview Pantry and initiated things through the Lakeview Pantry. Now we may be using them to do our ministry as opposed to them using us, but I think we do a lot of ministry throughout this community and always have. Mm -hmm. I think if you watch, if you think if you watch the last last week's worship service and the the one of the announcements that came from Janet Bauer who is the administrator at the Lakeview uh, Food Pantry and she talked specifically about the faithfulness and the dedication of the people at St. Peter and how we are called by God to really do God's ministry this is not the Lakeview Food pantries ministry. This is St. Peter ministry. So, it, it, so I will I will say, Craig, I agree with you. This is ministry that's not done at our building. So I so I get that part. Like that's I think that's the point. That that's the kind of thing that I think you're latching onto is like this yeah. is a ministry we're this doing at our building. But that does not mean that St. Peter is yeah, not. I'm not, I'm not saying that we're not active in the community doing other things, but I'm saying this is a ministry that we're taking on at our church and we're yeah. doing here. Yeah. And that and, doesn't mean that St. St. Peter is not doing ministry. No, I, and, and that's not that's not the point I was okay. trying to make. I was trying to say that it's it's what we're doing right now at our church, at our building. Yeah. Um during this yeah. time. And I mean 
when people question and say, are we being taken advantage of? And, you know, are, are, are people, you know, saying, oh, well, you know, we can come here every week. I would, I would, I would encourage them to come and see the families that we serve. Um, because the people that we serve are in desperate need of, of what we're giving them. I don't feel like any of the, any of the, the, the people that I've seen are, are taking advantage of us. I mean, like Bruce said, when people are in tears because they're going to be able to eat. I mean, for me, I've never, I've never been in the situation where I've wondered, where's my next meal going to come from? You know? I don't know what that feels like. I can only imagine, though, having somebody hand me a box of food and say, hey, what do you, you know, what, what else can we help you with? How, how much that, you know, what that must feel like. And, you know, for us to, to sit and worry about, you know, oh, you know, like, like Gary said the, the other night, you know, well, we, we, we always find a way at St. Peter's to pay the bills. We always find a way to do it. You know, this is one of those times where are we going to live in, you know, well, we, we should, you know, maybe scale down in this ministry or, or are we going to say, hey, let, let, let God take this over. Let's, you know, let's be there in, in, in support of, you know, the people who really need us. And I mean, I, I think it's a great, a, a great ministry that we're doing. Um, you know, hats off to Bruce and the Suits Hall. I mean, they've just, Sue's done an amazing job, Bruce too. And I just, you know, I, I can't, I can't see why we would in any way, shape or form think of doing anything to, to, to suppress, to suppress this and, and not keep it where, where it's going. Okay, Bill Duggan, and then yeah, I don't, Bill I Duggan, don't, and then Barb Marquette, and then Sherry Carney. I don't think anything, Craig, that has been said here tonight is to suppress this ministry. I think it's more, if anything, to put a structure around it that makes it work uh, in the best way we can make it work. And uh, we we have it, it's it's nice to think that let let God take over to this, but God also wants us to be good stewards. And right now we're facing. Uh, not only a deficit budget, but because of the people that have left a big deficit budget. And it's going to be very hard. And we, the, the council uh, under Barb has done a great job of sharpening the pencil and making sure that we're spending the money the right way and staying within the budget lines. But we're now to a point where the cuts are going to have to come in fixed costs. And that means salaries. And we're very close to getting to that point in the near, near future. We lost five or six families last year that are going to, as, as Harold said, they're going to count for about 20 plus thousand. And uh, that's going to put us right around 100 to $115,000 that we, we take in when we're spending about $145,000. And that, that's going to make it a tough year. We need to be aware of that when we do it. The other thing is we don't have line items for all of the other ministries that we do. And to your point, we've done very well with the uh, food pantry, or I'm sorry, the Pete's uh, pantry with donations to that. Actually, uh, quite a bit of money. As somebody said, it was $3,500 this year. That's a lot of money. I don't know of any of our other ministries that have gotten that kind of donation. But we just have to be good stewards of the gifts that we do have and share them in the best way we can and to make it last. And that means thinking about putting parameters around what we're doing and making sure that we are growing something that we don't have the ability to sit, sustain. Because I would hate to be the one that has to shut down the church and we have no more food pantry at all. We just have what I think what what we're all trying to say is let's do this the right way and, and build it correctly and make sure that we have the funding to do that kind of thing. But that, and, and Bill, I think that's why I started out this conversation by, with that devotion thing. What is, uh, what is the best way to spend our time and money to share, to, to show love to our community? And uh, Barb Marquette, you raised your hand and I think you have a unique uh, position to kind of have this conversation because of your experience in your work and things like that. So if you want to share, great. If not, I, we can't hear you. Well, you raised your hand, but 
She's like, I know, I know, wait. <laughs> There you go. I'm using Dave's computer, which I'm not that, you know, great at his laptop. That's anyway, okay, you go. Uh, you know, the Battle Creek community. Well, first of all, I was a social worker. That that's what I did, and a lot of what I did was take uh, my case to the veterans um, to any number of resources that the Battle Creek community has to support people whose resources, their own resources, don't. Uh, law their ends to meet. Okay, so I have I had a number of years of doing that. Battle Creek has a fantastic uh, community-wide organization of services to help those in need. One of which, obviously, is the food pantries. The food pantries have operated successfully for, you know, I did that work probably, oh, gal, 15 to 20 years ago. I mean, they've been operating for years successfully. They know how to operate successfully on a really tight budgets and so on and so forth. I, I'm boggled that they uh, can't do a lot of what Sue's doing to provide a little bit more or more often for their individual food pantries. That's a separate question for another day. But I, I am concerned about the level of service we are providing and our ability to sustain it long term. When you provide resources to human beings and they become dependent on it and you pull the rug, it's not kind. I, I had that happen to some of my veterans with different kinds of th things that they had to uh, access. I think it's imperative that we take a look at how we're operating and what impact it's had on growth. I think it would be very simple to scale back lengthen the time between whatever we need to do because it's going to keep growing if we continue to do it the way we're doing it. We can expect that. It ha that's what's happened. And we have to be strategic in our thinking so that we can sustain this. Not only money-wise, space-wise, labor-wise, you know, the whole, the whole picture. I would really challenge the the, the committee to really take, uh, have some really good conversations aside from this big one and how that can be done. Uh, look at what's happening and in, in the impact on the numbers and what it can do to make sure that we sustain this ministry long-term because I think it's, it's needed. You can see that. You drive by the church, you can see what's happening and it's, we need to figure out how to make it work long-term uh, for the best, for the uh, for our community, it's it's needed. It just is, but we do have to be smart about it uh, for the sake of the people receiving the service. Definitely. So I would really like people to take a hard look at what's happening to see uh, see take a look at that sustainability piece. Uh, I uh, and I I just want to echo what Bill Duggan said. Um, I've attended what three Lutheran churches now and visited many others and I've never attended or seen a church do as much as St. Peter does in, in ministry especially in feeding people look at what we're doing we're, we're we're being the church that's what we're called to do and we're doing that in many many ways and I don't hold any of those others in any less esteem than I do St. Pete's all the ways that we're feeding and working to, to feed people are equally important to our community. So I want I want uh, Lillian especially to hear that and the rest of you, all the, the St. Thomas, all the things at the soup kitchen, all the things we're doing are vital to our community and none of them are any less important than the other one. Um, but let's just look at Pete's pantry in a way that we can guarantee its sustainability uh, and do it the right way and maybe look at how we're impacting the others or how, how we can work with the others to maybe do things a little bit differently. I don't know, but I think we need to look at it. I really do. So, so given your, your unique perspective and what you have said, Barb, I think that it might behoove us to uh, gather a group of interested parties, uh, people who are dedicated to not only Pete's Pantry, but also to finding uh, a good balance of how can, how can we sustain this and, and what, what does it look like, to create an ad hoc community, committee to kind of discuss those issues. Um, for those of us gathered here, is that something that you would be open to? 
I mean, I yeah, okay. So Barb Hefner says thumbs up, but I don't know about anybody else. Nobody's like, okay, Barb Marquette. So we can do two Barb's. Um, Dave Marquette and John Chris. Uh, John and Jill, you guys haven't said much. Did you want to say anything at all? I mean, you haven't made a comment one, and so I don't want to prevent you from having a having a say here. Well, we, we haven't been, we learned a lot today because we didn't even realize what we were doing uh, uh, a year ago, let alone the last few months. So this is, this is helpful just to get an idea of what, uh, uh, what we've been up to with Peak's Pantry. And, and, and so, you know, we're interested in it and want to learn more. So maybe that's what you just suggested as a way to do that. So. And I think echoing what Sue Harris said, we're, you know, looking for just avenues we can do together to get involved. And, and so this has given us information on, on uh, how Pete's Pantry has been operating and, and a bit broader picture. Okay. Sherry, you raised your hand. Was that because you had a comment or you wanted to participate? We can't hear you yet. You got to unmute. Yeah, I know I'm far away, but I mean, it's near and dear to my heart, of course. Um, I just wondered, I, just to comment, and I know this is kind of a build on what Barb, or what, yeah, Barb Marquette said, is there an opportunity to long-term, and to your point, get people together to work with the food pantries in town that, I'm, I've seen both sides, we've worked both sides, and I just don't see them you know, getting the free stuff like Sue does, or, you know, just opportunities to show why we would be growing when the other food pantry, well, the Lakeview Food Pantry is, it, it, in the times that I've worked there this this year in the pandemic times, we'd be lucky to have five or six, a handful of people show up, you know, when we're working there. And grand, they're open Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But is there an opportunity to work together and say, this is what we're doing? It's too much maybe, but yeah, because it's every week, but maybe we can go every other week. And maybe there's an opportunity to get an intern from Western that says, okay, I'll go do the food, free shopping for all the food pantries once a month, you know, or something, you know, I'm just throwing ideas out. I just think that there's opportunity to work together to serve the community, right? I mean, we don't want to say we're better than anybody or anything else. I don't think that was the goal of this. I think that we just saw that there was a need. So, and who jumped in and bless her heart, we did it. <laughs> so. Okay, so it looks like to me, we have, um, uh, Jill and John, if we're going to do this, we're going to have Jill and John, we're going to have uh, Barb Marquette, Barb Hefner, and Sherry be part of this conversation, and myself. Um, is there anyone else that wants to sign on for this conversation? Melissa Raditz and Bruce. Okay. We don't want to get it too big. Um, and Sue told, yeah, we, we definitely need Sue. Um, yeah, Bruce, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What did you say? You had a your thumbs down. Said if Sue's going to do it, then I'm going off. Okay, so Bruce, no. Sue told, yes. And then Harold, you, you raised your hand as well. Yeah, if, if you want somebody, I'll be on there. Plus the other, I do want to make a comment is that... Uh, you know, several of you have said that uh, financially, you know, St. Peter has the ability to to work, you know, this project. Um, as a dollar and cents person, I do have to tell you, you need to take a serious look at the past budgets of uh, St. Peter's for the last five, six years. And over the last four or five years, we have been decreasing and not maintaining or sustaining ourselves so um, things are getting tighter. We probably have only about $25,000 in reserve that's available, you know, that is spendable dollars if we can't meet our budget. So we're closer to uh, having a, a crisis thing than you realize. Thank you. I appreciate that, Harold. Sue Toll, you have your hand raised. I do, because I'm, uh, you know, the idea of the um, line item 
that all is a little foreign to me. I guess I would say that I don't think uh, there would ever be an intent that we would, uh, you know, cause the church. We are the church, but we don't want to cause ourselves trouble. And so we functioned with donations and, I, you know, we could function with donations and do what we can do with what we get. And we, and that, cause that's kind of been how we presented it to the people anyway. You know, what we get, very happy to give out, but you know, so if we didn't get a lot of stuff, we just explain to them, we're not getting a lot of stuff or, or whatever, you know? So I don't know if it needs to be a line item. We were just doing by whatever people felt led to, to donate, so. Well, tonight's discussion was not to not to decide whether or not we needed a line item. That was last night. Uh, tonight was just really to have information gathering about how we're doing Pete's Pantry, what it looks like, where we're going in the future, and to potentially set up a you know some uh, some kind of committee that would have a discussion on on like the future of who we are. Um, that's been bubbling up for the last several months. And I really appreciate, I, I see you, Bill. So hold on. I appreciate there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people that have already said that they want to be part of this. So I think that's enough, but um, it will not happen between now and the end of the year. But I suspect in January, we'll continue to, to, to progress as we, as we have for the month of December, but in you know, mid to mid January, we'll gather these people that have said that, and we will um, kind of have something where we can have a substantive conversation about where we go next. So, Bill, you had something you wanted to share. Well, I just wanted to uh, uh, mention that the line item idea is there was a time, and it may have been 15 or more years ago, when all of our social ministry projects were a line item. And over the years, because we've had these deficit budgets, we've just basically eliminated line items for our social ministry things other than benevolence and maybe the, the cost of the committee, you know, a, a stipend for the committee to use to, to raise funds. So uh, that's part of the what Harold is talking about. We're getting at that point now where we're cutting into things and it's it's a, it's looking a little bleak for the, for the upcoming year, uh, even though We've actually had some increases in in, uh, in pledges. We had one decrease, but we've had a couple of increases. And we're assuming that if people aren't in touch with us, that they're going to stay at the same level. But the same level isn't going to help us next year. I mean, we we are we're, we're going to be a, a little bit under a crunch next year. I appreciate you offering that as our stewardship committee chair. And so we're, we're reaching the end of the time that I thought that we would Pastor. have for this. Yes, but I, and I was going to ask you, Jan, is there any, are there any other comments that anyone well, wants? Well, I would just like, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're looking for a volunteer opportunity, this is for the Chris and um, Sue. Oh, Sue, Jan, the Lakeview and Food you. Pantry. Say that, say that again, Jan, we lost you for a second. <laughs> when we, when we're look, if you're looking for a volunteer opportunity, when we work at the Lakeview Food Pantry, we could use more volunteers. When we work at Sally's Kitchen, we could use volunteers. So contact Lynn and he can set you up. Yes, we, de we definitely, it's not, it's not just Pete's Pantry that needs volunteers. I mean, we, we do have a significant decrease in the amount of volunteers we get at both Sally's Kitchen and uh, the Lakeview Food Pantry. And those are those are not quite as often as the as Pete's Pantry, but um, yeah, we definitely. You're right, Lynn, Jan. That's 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 definitely there. So, other uh, comments or questions? I think we've kind of exhausted all of our conversation, but um, I don't want to close this out without opening it up for any more comments. I, I hadn't really heard from Jackie as much um, or. Um, or Barb Hefner, any, anything else you guys want to share? Okay, Jackie's shaking her head. She's like, nope, got nothing. <laughs> Barb Hefner, anything for you? No, she says no. Okay. All right, uh, seeing nobody else chiming in or raising their hand, um, I want to say thank you very much for your faithful dedication to this conversation. 
Um, this is a blessed ministry and we are very grateful for everyone who participates. As I said, this has nothing to do with any kind of statement against uh, the extravagant love that we are showing to our community. It is just kind of understanding how we go forward. And I appreciate all of the I, I appreciate all of the respect and the, the affirmation of what we're doing. So thank you very much for your time and let us let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you give us the gift of humanity where we feel empathy towards our neighbor, towards our sisters and brothers, our siblings in Christ that moves us to action. Continue to inspire that feeling that we want to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit those who are in need, even if at a distance, <laughs> and to honor our Christian sisters and brothers in such a way that manifest your glory here on earth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks again, Jennifer. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate this conversation. Thank you to everyone who participated. And this recording I will post uh, tomorrow so that everyone has a chance to watch it. And um, thank you again for all of your conversation. Bye. It was lovely to see you all. Thanks. Yep. And Melissa, I will I will send you a specific link to it so you can get it early. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.